Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again tomorrow. It's Friday, Parashat Tzav. It's also Parashat Para. We're, talk, we're going to be reading a special reading regarding the Red Heifer. But um, I want to open up with the tragic um, the tragedy that took place this week in the United States. And, um, and I want to um, first remind you what happened because the current events, what goes on in this country, it's, it's hard to keep up in the world what's happening with the rate of events that take place. And I'm talking about the condemnation of Israel in the United Nations, where, tragically, the United States, the only true friend Israel's had, decides to not to veto the um, condemnation against Israel. And, and of course, that immediately gave the terrorists, Hamas and all their cohorts, that gave them the power to now say, let's let's toughen our demands against Israel, and it and it pushed the hostage deal further away, and it's no doubt it's giving a prize to terrorism, but unfortunately, the entire world has been taken in by the lie, what the Hamas um, radicals are trying to project, and at the same time this week we saw the the terrible tragedy in 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 Russia, where again it was these radical Muslims, Daesh who came and just slaughtered innocent um, civilians. This is the enemy we're fighting against. Israel's fighting against this enemy. And the world, instead of realizing this, they're taking sides against Israel and giving fuel to those evil forces in the world. It doesn't make any sense. And I thought the terrible tragedy in Baltimore, it is so symbolic of, and, and it's so careful, with the, with the nations have to be careful the way, you know, for their own people, because if they're going to war against Israel, Israel is the apple of God's eye, and Hashem, God, will, will never forsake His people, no matter what. And the world has to be careful the way He treats Israel. We've been through up and downs, we've had tragedies, like no other nations in the world have suffered. But at the end, God never forgets who we are, and never gets His people here. And I thought of, of it's, if you think about it, the whole, the whole thing, a bridge going down. What is a bridge? A bridge symbolizes the connection, to connect to one another. Don't break a bridge with your only true ally in the Middle East. Don't break those bridges. And, and more so, the, the ship that hit the um, pillar of the bridge that brought the bridge down was a supply ship, bringing supplies. It reminded us of the whole reason of condemning Israel by saying for humanitarian aid with that, that whole thing when, the, when no one is starving in Gaza. And that's constantly pushing pushing, you know, pressing and, and, and always stressing that, that concept of, of the innocent people where who brought that whole thing, if not they brought, they brought it on themselves and it was defending itself for, for war, a war of survival, a war of survival, literally. And I'll add, fascinating, the, in, in, in English, the word Baltimore, if we take those letters in Hebrew, the first two letters of the word Baltimore in Hebrew is, you can say, is Bet Lamed, the two dominating letters of the two letters in Hebrew, meaning Bal, don't. What does that all remind you of? Biden comes to Israel and he says, don't, to the, um, you know, to the Arab world, saying, don't you dare start with my ally. And that was the way, a reminder of what you said, don't, because the continuation of the word in Hebrew means, don't tamer, don't change. Baltimore is bal tamer. Don't change, don't change your ally for something else. Don't replace Israel. Israel is your ally. Remain loyal to Israel. And that, the signs were right, very clear, on the wall here, if we look deep into it, into things. And again, this what happens is when the leaders of countries don't behave properly, they bring tragedies to their own people. And that's what the world, the world is suffering now from this Islamic radicalism that is literally seeping into the world and, and trying to conquer the world. And that must be stopped. That That's very, very dangerous. I mean, if everyone looks, I mean, just yesterday they had in Israel, um, they released the army, Israeli army, releases one of the um, in investigations that went on investigating one of these murderous rapists um, of Hamas. And you see, you see right there, um, literally describing how he raped and shot um, and, um, Israelis. So, I mean, you hear someone describing that, and people are saying it's lies in here, right out of the horse's mouth. And these are the people who continue with you know, they're trying to reverse, you know, the situation and say, saying, God forbid, there were Israeli soldiers and it turned out to be all lies. Israeli soldiers are the most moral, behaved soldiers there are in the world. And everything about Israel is morality. 
and to come and turn things around and make Israel, make the, the victim into the aggressor and make the aggressor into the victim. That's exactly what the lies of these radical Muslims are trying to do. And that's, unfortunately, the whole world is being taken in. I'm talking about, of course, not the whole world. There are many, 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 many people in the world that know the, and, and think like uh, what we think here, what I'm saying, but I'm saying leaders of world leaders that just trying for their own personal interests are not taking stand, strong stand. And this is all to do with progressive liberalism that has, has always sanctified the victim. They, they make up the victim, the most, their underdogs, instead of realizing that who, who, who the real victim is and they're turning themselves into victims and the world into victims of terrible of a takeover of all these so-called underdogs in their eyes, but they're taking over the world and they're allowing evil to permeate all aspects of life. And this must be stopped. This way of thinking has to be reversed. And this, if this way of thinking is reversed, we'll be able to bring a huge salvation to the world. And that's what we're fighting for in Israel. This is the most, the most ethical war that can be fought. We're fighting for our existence. Every day we're being, they're trying to smuggle in weapons from Iran, through Syria, through, look what's going up north in Hezbollah, and then the south, and attacks in Judea and Samaria, we're being attacked, and, and, and from Jordan, all fronts, we are being attacked and threatened on all fronts. Israel standing like a sheep alone. And until now, we are obviously very, very grateful for Biden giving, sending weapons into Israel, which is also not to be taken for granted. Thank God America was standing with Israel. But things are beginning to change. For all, and that's, those things that are changing now must stop now. They have to follow through. America must stand with Israel till the very end until we defeat the evil force of Hamas and don't allow them to lift their heads up again in the world. Their Daesh, that we call in Hebrew, Daesh, those, those terrorists that perpetrated the terrible crime in Russia, killing innocent people, hundreds of people killed there, and the same forces that want to take over the world with radical Islamic um, doctrine which will only bring destruction to anyone that doesn't look or think like they do. Very, very dangerous. Israel is the only true democracy. We must stand up for Israel. I'm just sharing this as an opening to the lesson because it's on my heart, and you know it's so painful because you see, just yesterday there was a, a, a shooting attack in Israel and um, in a place called Uja. The uh, terrorists opened fire on a school bus of children. That's, that's what they tried to kill children, kill innocent children. And the other, the other car was hit was a car of, of um, very left-wing Israeli um, anarchists, literally. Um, was it a month, even less than a month, maybe a little over a month ago when, when they were thrown out of the car by some, um, by some, again, radical Muslims, threw them out of the car, stole their car. They, and, and the next day they're coming back on four again and trying to say, we're here for peace, we're here for peace. And, the, and yesterday their car was shot on. <laughs> they shot the car up and people were injured and hospitalized, and again, not the, what's going to wake them up? This is the same kind of progressive, liberal um, um, an attitude that is, is, is wreaking, wreaking havoc in the world, it's causing such terrible danger to the world. And this is what brought us the war in Israel, this, this kind of, kind of, we call it Hebrew, conceptia, this kind of um, way of thinking, it led to the October 7th um, massacre. And this kind of way of thinking will continue to bring more trouble, more massacres to the world if we do not change the way of thinking, how to deal with This is the Middle East. You have to deal with evil with a strong hand. There's no other way around it. And this will bring peace to the world. This will bring true peace to the world. There's no one who's, who's given more for peace and wants peace in the world and who, and, and who cares for, for humanity more than Israel does. And that's proven. And if people really cared about the Arab civilians um, in Gaza, which we have to remind ourselves, is that where did all the terrorists of Gaza come from? The 40,000 um, radical Muslims that are killing, that want to kill Jews and have killed so many Jews and attacking Israel. They've supported 80% of Gaza, or more than over 80%, 85% of Gaza supports what the acts were done, those massacres that was committed in October 7th. So we have to realize first of who we're dealing with. A population that's supporting this terrorism. But Israel's going beyond to try it's best not to have civilians hurt. So I'm saying, if, we, if really the world cared about this innocent civilians of Gaza, they would open the doors and say, okay, you know something? They're in a bad situation. 
let them leave. And how many, ask them how many want to leave Gaza. I would assume probably 90% would be running on the boat out to go anywhere to get out of that area. And that's where we see the world is totally, they, they want to uh, maternalize the situation of Gaza. They'd rather it continue this way. It would bring a bad name for Israel, again, being the aggressor over these innocent victims, so-called victims. Obviously, the situation is reversed, but that's exactly what the world wants. They want to make Israel seem as an aggressor, and it's, and it's very convenient politically for them. And therefore, instead of really caring for the, for the civilians there and taking them away from that, and, and this would really be able to make a real change, because maybe if they scatter them around the world in different places, maybe they'll, they'll change their ways instead of always wanting to kill and murder and destroy Israel. Because they, from the river to the sea, they leave no room for Israel. We are in a war for our survival. And the world has to wake up to this fact. And Israel will not stop until we, are, we win the war. And we, we, then we will literally bring a lot more peace to the world. That's going to bring a blessing to the world. So the world has to be with us on this. And not give in to all this propaganda. And these wonderful people getting on stage and making it seem, oh, the poor Gazans. Think about poor Israel. If Israel doesn't stand up for its rights... And look what's going on now in, in Iran. They're, they're very close to the nuclear war. In one day, they can give the word out to the Hezbollah and they can launch thousands of missiles in Israel. In one, in one moment, missiles can come from, if they have missiles in, in um, Syria as well, and missiles in the, the Hutim in, the, in, in Yemen, were attacked on all fronts. This is Israel's really threatened for its existence. We must stand with Israel. We cannot abandon the people of God that are light to the nations. And I wanted to open up with that again. I'm stressing this, and um, just I'm on fire. I can say it's really so painful to see. I mean, it's unbelievable. I just don't know what to you know what to say. And I, I think everyone can hide behind the you know hide behind the wall, and just you know cover them with, cover their face. They have to stand up for Israel now and speak out on behalf of Israel because it's just going to get worse. The anti-Semitism around the world. If they don't show how Israel is doing, what's right. And that's the thing, the Torah is so ethical. And the war in, in the deep ways against the Torah. Because they're trying to replace Torah ethics with human ethics. And the one who decided for the world what the proper way of behavior is the Torah. And we have to always remember that. And when human ethics takes over, so-called, so they're, unfortunately, they can decide what, what's ethical in their eyes, like Sodom and Gomorrah. It's literally... But we're talking about the behavior of, of what was done to Israel on October 7th, coming and destroying, and babies are thrown in stoves, and beheadings, and unbelievable eyes plucked out, I mean, things that you can't fathom. And again, I said, just listen to the testimonies of, of all these women that were abused and raped um, and murdered by, I don't know, I can't, subhumans, people that are worse than animals to do these kind of things. It doesn't make any sense. For us, you know, people that are, are, are people of love, people of, of, of true ethics, of Torah ethics, cannot, we cannot understand it. And I'm, and I'm saying a lot of the people in the world, when, they, when they're worried and they're concerned about humanity, you know, the, the human you know, effort on behalf of, of innocent people being killed, you know, it, comes from a good, it doesn't come from a bad place, it comes from a place inside their hearts, caring about others, right? but they don't understand that they're... they're, they're their ethics are becoming warped because, again, they are turning away from facing evil and, and making sure that evil is eradicated. And sometimes the price is very big to pay. And no, and no one wants to kill, no one wants to have to go to battle, but war is a dirty, dirty game. I like the word game. It's a dirty business. And um, we want it to end quickly. And if, if the world was standing with Israel, it would have been over by now. The whole thing, by the, uh, we got to, we're up to Rafa now, that last section Israel has to finish, and hopefully to release the hostages that have been for over a half a year already in slavery, the worst conditions, and people now you thinking about the hostages have to be released. If the Hamas would have released the hostages and surrendered, this would have been over on, on day two. But this is not what the case is, and they're the ones that are to blame, not Israel. And remember that very, very well and carefully.